what's going on everybody welcome back to marks rc thanks for stopping by the channel so obviously this is a video about upgrading the uh, metal differentials in a wl toys a959 so let's just get started i ordered this kit off of i believe uh amazon and it took a couple weeks to get here but it was a all-inclusive kit came with another metal drive shaft I've got two metal differentials in here, as well as all metal transfer case gears, and of course a metal pinion gear. So looking forward to getting that stuff in here. I blew up the rear differential in this a couple of weeks ago, and it has been benched pretty much ever since. And I've had just a million other projects going on, so I figured I'd wait until everything was here and I was all done with my other stuff before I dove into getting this one fixed and back up and running. I just got a million things going on with RC, it seems, these days, running the channel and such. So, and uh, oh, while I'm not on the subject, uh, thank you to the just mad rush of subscribers that uh, came to the channel after uh, a posting of uh, a recent C24 video that was probably the single largest day of activity that I've ever had on my, my channel. Uh, and just a whole host of new subscribers. Uh, the video count was, it almost felt like it went viral. <laughs> uh, but it's something, it's something I've really never experienced too much of uh, so far in my almost two years of running the channel. So the A59, A959, excuse me, you're going to want to remove these two screws off the top of the drive shaft cover plate, which also has four screws holding it on in the back. It sits over the rear transfer gear makes contact with the pinion coming off of the motor. So you've got a couple of really long screws holding this in in the back. And one was kind of hidden up by this thing, so we'll need to just sort of reach in there a little further to get it. I do believe these are different length too. The ones that are in the back are short, and the ones that are in the, in the front of this are actually long. So you want to make sure that the right screw goes back in the right spot when you go to reassemble this. Make sure everything, oh, there is one more screw down over here. I forgot about that one. So once this is free, this should allow me to expose the gears. Ah, one more thing. There are two screws Hold this all so neatly, tightly together on the top. Not that I need a T wrench for this as well. It's been a while since I've taken this thing apart. I modded it up right when I right when I purchased it. I haven't really done much to it since, just because it's been an awesome runner. Until uh, one day, not long ago, I decided that uh, I was going to run it around in some gravel, and that proved to be a bit of a mistake, just because. It ended up sucking up a, a rock into the rear differential, which of course seized it and caused everything to just strip right out. Oh, I can't stand it. Some nuts get stuck in there. It's such a pain. Those little four millimeter nuts sometimes get stuck in the end of the little four millimeter T wrench or whatever they end up sending out. And it's just such a joy trying to get those things out of there. I think I'll let those live in there for now while I'm working on this. So once those eight screws essentially are done, you might need to pry one side or the other off. Once all of that is free, I think it comes apart. <laughs> there we go. And of course you got your antenna, which is going to be housed in your little antenna housing. Uh, yeah, there's some two pieces there, so I forgot about that. Okay. So now what we've got is our rear gears, Pinion is exposed, and this has a metal pinion on it, so I'm probably not going to change that, but I will, by all means, put the metal shaft, put the metal axle on the, uh, the drive shaft itself. Now, in order to expose the rest of what we got going on here, you got to take a little cowling off the front. Just one simple screw, set that up to the side, and as you can see, this is a little dirty, so I'm just going to take us a couple seconds to uh, kind of take a brush, sort of clean things off a little bit here, and... Uh, this is what I kind of like to use. I keep on my bench like an old toothbrush and an old pretty like one inch trim brush. And these work great for getting down inside and just brushing 
all kinds of stuff off. I'm not going to do that here on my mat because I don't want to have to clean the mat up. So I'm going to take this over to the can. I'll be right back and I'll continue filming when I get back. Okay, much better. Now that that's all cleaned out, now we can kind of take a look at what we need to do. We need to open up the uh, the diffs here, or excuse me, the front, front diff cover and the rear diff cover. This is actually fairly easy. Everything is held on by just these two screws and you've already removed those two. If you want to make your life easy, you can undo the whole shock tower thing here. But I believe if you just undo those two screws, you should be able to pretty much lift everything and set it down. If not, you might want to take the shocks off and actually let's do that. By the way, folks, I know a lot of people are constantly in search for a good toolkit. This is not a sponsorship item. This is just to let you know what I personally use. I have burned through, I'm not even sure how many 1.5 millimeter screwdrivers that I've uh, purchased, you know, in, in kit form or what have you. And they, without a doubt, just get rounded off within such a short amount of time. And you end up with damaged grub screws that you can't remove or what have you. Um, basically, what I ended up doing was going to my local hardware store and they've had a couple of uh, toolkits. Um, that are essentially kind of more for iPhones. They're called iFixit. Um, very comprehensive toolkit. In fact, I can kind of show that to you on camera here in just a second, but the thing is just amazing. While I'm rambling away. If you don't have one of these, get one. It's It's got the full spread of everything on top. And then of course the full spread of all of your hexes that you're gonna need here and most of your Phillips here. It's got all your flat blade that you're gonna need. Um, and any other specialty type of tips, you got square drives, you have uh, a plus whatever that thing is, I'm not even sure, but you have a bunch of torque style. It also comes with an extension and as well, a pair of really nice stainless steel needle nose that have been of course painted black. So they're nice and easy to hold on to. They've got a good traction surface. And then of course the cover that comes with this thing has a nice magnetic closure on it. So this is good to be able to just throw in your toolbox if you're headed out for the day when you get your cars and you don't want to worry about where everything is all hiding. Just keep it in there. Again, that's made by iFixit. This is not sponsored by this company. I'm just letting you know what I use. Um, I have now been using this kit for a few months and have, I, I can't even tell you how how nice it is to not strip grub screws uh, when you're busy tightening things up or loosening things up or whatever. So anyway, this is such an easy, easy, easy mod. The, this is literally the differentials just pull out as simple as that. And you can already tell this thing kind of had a little bit of wear and tear going in. It feels a little gritty. Um, but these are plastic differential cups, and this is also a plastic gear, so it's sort of understandable why they give out so easily. They do have nice sealed bearings inside, so they do roll fairly smooth. But once they get dirty, once they kind of get uh, a little a little use, a little worn, they tend to get a little gritty, and they also can just wear out fast. So I decided to go with metal. I think metal is obviously going to last considerably longer. Now, I could go absolutely totally crazy and totally hone out the inside of that, but as I'm looking at it, there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot, if really much of any dirt in here at all. I do actually see some teeth wear, just probably simply from driving or what have you. But as far as like there being dirt in here, I don't really, I don't see any at all. I greased these up, I opened them up a few months ago and I greased them up and everything. And so that front end part of the car stays really clean. You can see where the, the dust and dirt and everything has gotten into where the, uh, the cups are at that hold the dog bones but it doesn't make it inside of the gearbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip doing any kind of maintenance on that. And I'm just gonna generically throw them right back in. So this kit comes with a metal front and rear differential. It appears that maybe one of these guys slipped out in transit, no big deal. These have a square shaft, which just simply pops right back into this side here. It should hold in, there you go. And you just want to check everything, make sure it feels fine, really smooth, really nice and smooth, actually, much smoother than the original factory stuff. So, okay, now uh, I need to try and remember which side it was that I pulled that thing off. I do believe it was this. And yes, if you're afraid of getting greasy and dirty and so on and so forth, and you're not really interested in messing around with this stuff, it might not be the hobby for you. But if you like working on cars and you don't necessarily want to become an actual like mechanic, 
a fun hobby to get into because you know it's sort of you know it lets you kind of satisfy that need to tinker which is fun okay so a little bit of pressure right and that thing is sitting right back in there okay um i do want to be absolutely certain of my my orientation my motor rule here i almost feel You get so far into one and then all of a sudden you make a mistake and you're like, oh shoot, now I gotta go back and change everything. Great. Let's see if this gets us anywhere. Oh, I think that's the direction there. Okay, perfect. Okay, now while that looks a little shoddy, that's gonna go all the way back just fine. So I want to grab those two short screws that hold the front side of this together. And that's going to keep that uh, diff cover a little bit more in place while I work on the rest of this. You don't want to put everything back together just yet because you're not quite there. Actually, I don't need to do this just yet because I forgot to place the drive shaft. So I'm going to pop the drive shaft first here while I'm, while I'm in this far. I will need to take this apart and grab all of the parts off of this, excuse me, just the bearings, sorry. And then I will rebuild that with the new metal gears and then I will put that all in at the same time. See, these are all Delrin gearing. So, you know, it's pretty pretty easy to understand why, you know, these gears give out. They don't necessarily take a whole ton of abuse. They're good for a short period of time. What really helped this thing was throwing the metal differential in, or excuse me, the metal drive shaft. And then uh, obviously sealed bearings all the way through, you know, for the most part, which really does help it run considerably better. So let's undo this really quick. That's just simply a Phillips screw that's in the one end of that. And that'll free up one end of a pinion. Make sure to retrieve your bearing. If you can get the bearing removed. Oh man, that does not want to come off of there. I am going to grab a gear with pliers folks just because it needs to happen it's not going back in anyway so don't worry about it it's just jammed right on there don't believe i have any spares shoot try a wider screwdriver tip to see if i get a little bit more leverage prying it out of there this is a pain which is also again why i said if you're not used to tinkering with stuff and you don't like working on things or you don't want to get your hands dirty okay so that's freed up thankfully let's uh take a peek at the this gear, this is the one that goes on here. Okay, nice, that slid right on there, perfect. Okay, so now this new shaft, this just has, this is the strangest thing, and I was really confused when I first saw this. This just has two tiny little metal studs sticking out, and this is where your, uh, your ring gear is gonna go, your spur gear, excuse me. This is where your spur sits on this end, and of course your front pinion sits down on this one. And it helps if you take the screw out so you can actually put the thing on there. Looks like they put a little bit of Loctite there, which is not a bad idea. So I will do that again myself. So, excuse me a second, my Loctite. Tiny little bit of Loctite blue is not gonna hurt that going back on. Okay. Okay, all right, so that's now tightened down. It's been thread locked on there. That is not going anywhere. Let's take a look at the back gear. Okay, so have that perfect good so you need to put the uh the spur on first and it's going to go on fairly snug but that locks right down onto those two metal studs that are sticking out of your boy that's a really nice piece 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 of equipment that it feels just feels really nice and solid there oh i forgot to put a bearing on woe is me this one might want to come off to the other side because i don't know if i'd ever get this spur off of here but luckily once i get this thing to that point, it should just slide right off the shaft, obviously. All right. So this should pop right back off. And of course you're gonna wanna put your bearing on, which is a nice snug fit. Boy, that feels great. Really, really nice. Okay, again, your tabs, there are two, two sets of those here. You can just pick one. It's just gonna snug in right, right where it's supposed to. Boy, that feels great. 
really nice piece. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to just remove the second pinion. I'll tell you, there's one thing that I don't like. That's the smell of Loctite. I cannot stand the smell of this stuff. Bugs me. I know that sounds like such a weird thing to say, but it's 100% true. I cannot stand the smell of Loctite. It just smells so strange to me. What am I even doing? It's a question I ask myself quite often. Now, with any luck, oh good. Okay, so now I get to go through this process one more time of getting this bearing removed from the pinion. See what happens. I guess I could talk a little bit about the A959 while I'm busy doing all this nonsense. For those of you who know, for those of you who are here, obviously you know the A959 pretty darn well. For those of you that don't know, uh, basically you can pick these things up for about $52, $53, I think is what I got this from, or for from Banggood on a one week delivery. Actually showed up incredibly fast. I think it was here in about three days. Um, and they are a, I think it's 118 scale buggy. While not the fastest thing in the world, they are incredibly fun right out of the box with no real need to do a ton of modifications to them right away. However, if you want to get into modifying them, you can purchase quite literally every metal part that you want them to basically rebuild them with. They come with all plastic components on them. Not every bearing is sealed, but it does have sealed, sealed bearings on them. At any rate, you can do things like add sealed bearings to the outside of the, the, the wheels, which definitely help speed things up and, and add a tremendous amount of stability. Um, do things like adding uh, metal C-cups, so on and so forth. But this is a real pain getting this one here. I'm not sure about this one. Um, ouch. Nice, nice thumb pinch there. Just lost it. Well, sh gear shoots across the room. Go ahead and leave your comments about my shitty pliers if you want. That's fine. I don't care. My God, why is this thing not coming off here? There. Sometimes things like that just make no sense to me why they don't come apart so easy. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have one more Phillips screw. There it is. Okay, so we got one screw left here that we're going to put in the back of this. That's enough for that. This is. Once again, let's grab some thread lock. The differential replacement in this is a really easy project. You know, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's a matter of just uh, cracking this thing open, having the right stuff to do it all. And of course the parts. That's nicely seated on there. Double check the other one for tightness. Should be good. Okay. Now that we have the shaft replaced, we can lift this back up. Got to sneak that gear underneath the front, and then you just got to sneak this one right into the back. And this thing is just going to sit right back down in there. Should sit right back down in there. You gotta push this bearing forward. God damn, okay, there it goes. All right, perfect, nice, great fit. Snug. Okay, now that the front differential is all back together, I can take those screws, those two screws that were sitting around here somewhere, right there. And let's get that front end back together so that doesn't start flopping around when I'm working on the back. I was gonna record this in like segments, you know, I was gonna do like bit by bit and take a break and go do something else and everything, you know. Because I, I really, these days, I'm just not into filming how to's anymore. Um, I used to be like right when I first started when I was getting the channel going and stuff like that, but I don't know why I just kind of have stepped away from doing them. And I mean, I realized that they're probably my most like popular watched videos are the ones that definitely bring in the most views. I mean, I don't know about viewer retention or anything like that, but definitely experience a lot of traffic, thankfully, um, because of that. And so, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's been something that I've, you know, I've, kind of just stepped away from it. I don't really know why, but I just have. So anyway, here I am doing a house. We're about to get a thunderstorm. 
So I do have one screw that I need to, to replace on this. I have one that came off of the, uh, the C cup on the low side of this on the underside. So I'm going to hit stop for a second, see what's going on for the weather. Okay. We're back. I've managed to get no further along here. Uh, what I am doing right now is going to try and change. So apparently they stripped it, putting it on to the motor. So there is no no removing that that pinion gear from the motor. The the hex has been stripped. I've never taken that off of there before. It does have a little bit of thread lock? It looks like kind of packed in there. So, but that hole is just completely rounded right out. It should be a 1.5, and this this just has no impact on it whatsoever. And this is my best 1.5. This thing does not strip. The screw will strip long before this thing ever does. So that thing is done and it's going to stay on there. I was kind of thinking that this might be a little bit better pitch. I'm sure it'll be fine. It doesn't feel like there's too much slop in between there. In fact, it feels fine. So I think this would be okay. But it would have been nice to put a brand new gear in there along with a new rub. So I'll just save that from some other future need, I guess. Who knows? It might come in handy somewhere. Okay, let's do this rear differential here. So I want to undo these uh, two rear shocks to make it a little bit easier to get that opened up back there and that's not going to fight me. Just undo those and set them off to the side. The windows are open after a nice thunderstorm. So you hear the occasional car driving by. Since I live right on very busy Route 100 in the great state of Vermont. So these two screws back here, they're short, just undo those. And they actually have a larger thread set too, uh, a little more coarse thread for plastic, they're not a machine screw. Use it to differentiate from the other two, which came off of the old drive shaft. I should set those aside. Okay, so now this is gonna open right up. And it's gonna expose the other diff, which should have some kind of serious signs of wear on it. Oh, it's stripped inside. Okay, so the gears went inside. So it wasn't actually the ring or the pinion. It's that the gears really did go, ooh, that sounds gnarly. Okay, so plastic gears, you know, um, if you're gonna run your vehicles pretty hard, that's probably one of the one of the prices you're gonna pay right there, so. Okay, let's get the other one in. This is such an easy modification to do. And it's really one that is, you know, if you're looking at prolonging the life of your A959. It's a very affordable kit. I can't even remember how much it was. It was only like 20 bucks, 25 bucks or something like that. And it took a couple of weeks to arrive, but that's because I ordered one from China, from Banggood, which regardless of all the shit people like to talk about China, that is like where 90%, 80 to 90% of like all of our electronics and RC imports and stuff like that are made and originate from. Um, and so oftentimes, if you're willing to wait a little bit longer, you don't have to pay for somebody to mark that cost up two or three times by the time it gets here to the United States, just to simply have it here on U.S. soil to purchase. You know, it takes anywhere from about two to three weeks, as much as maybe four weeks maximum to get something to delivered from China. And uh, you're going to get it delivered to you for a fraction of the cost. So that's what I did. I ordered a kit uh, from Amazon. I think it was from Amazon. I'd have to go back and look. And it was from Amazon, yes. And it's just one of those that probably came, you know, originally from Banggood. I remember seeing them selling these types of kits. And uh, yeah, about three and a half weeks later, it showed up. And I just have not gotten around to working on putting it in this thing. And here we are. So that's the rear differential. Um, that is now back together. I just want to check my drive line. Everything seems to be it's rolling in the direction that it should be, so we're good there. Okay, wow, that feels really, really smooth. Not gonna lie, it feels incredibly smooth. It's good. Okay, now to put everything back together, I left my screws in here, and plus two, this is a little cup that sits over the bearing, it's a little bearing cup. That's just gonna go right back on over the top. Make sure you don't cinch your wiring down in between. There's a functional steering link there. This, I keep forgetting the order in which this actually comes apart. So 
So this goes on first over the pinion and spur, coming off the motor transfer case, if you will. And then this sneaks back down in there to seat properly. Make sure everything is sitting down where it's supposed to be. Okay. And then just grab your Phillips. And just run all these screws right back in. So the A959 is a very inexpensive little bash rig. I'm not even sure if I call it a bash rig. Bash rigs to me are a little bit more like jump rigs and stuff like that. You can jump one of these if you want, but it's probably going to last you about five minutes out of the box if you go and start beating on it. They're really good for like flat ground, you know, speed runs, drifting, stuff like that. Maybe running them on gravel or dirt or what have you, you know, just to kick up some sand and whatnot, you know, do some some donuts or whatever. But the second you're going to want to take one of these off of the jumps and stuff like that, then sure you can, absolutely. You know, you can probably take it to your local skate park. But like I said, um, you know, it might last you all of about five minutes or so. So it's really based upon, you know, what your expectations versus what it is that you know that you've purchased. You know, if you want a bash rig, then you should probably buy a bash rig. But if you want to go bash with one of these, then you'll probably just turn around and have to buy a bash rig later. So um, other than that, if you wanted to get one of these and start modding them up to turn them into a tiny little, just a terror of a race car, um, they come with, you know, excuse me, they, they sell all of the modifications that you could ever possibly want to put on one of these things. I don't know if I necessarily believe in switching everything over. Um, I, I happen to have personal experience with trying to set up some of these cars with all metal parts. And at times it can be very frustrating with the lack of results that end up coming out of that because they just don't quite do what they're supposed to do. They introduce a little bit of bearing, you know, a little bit of a slop or something like that into the systems. You can hear those sandpipers out there whistling away. Not always an evening thing around these parts. You hear the sandpipers going crazy about this time of night. Once you get that started, you can put your T wrench back on there. It's always kind of a pain to get that thing started. Sorry that's so off center, but don't care about Let's double check and make sure I didn't over tighten steering. Good deal. Okay. Now, in order to get this antenna lead back up in here, it doesn't take too much. You just need to thread the antenna itself into the mast. We should have done this before I put the thing on there, but that's quite all right. And now that that's up and through there, what you can do, wherever that little cap went, let that cap go. Tiny little rubber cap around here somewhere for the top of this antenna. Not necessary, but uh, it does keep the thing from slipping and falling back down inside of the chassis. So anyway, let's just do up the motor leads and we'll hook up that servo. Proper kind of piece of something to stick that down again. Okay, plug our motor leads in. And let's get this DSC servo plug back into the DSC. One of my least favorite things about this, and there aren't many things that I don't like about the A959, but one of my things that I don't like about it is that it has such exposed sides, the body doesn't really come all the way far enough down to completely, you know, enclose and protect it. And, uh, oh yeah, we're still on. Um, doesn't come all the way down to, to fully protect it. So it just gets just peppered with, with material inside of here, just dirt and dust and everything else just from running. So it, yeah, it can get a little messy inside of these things. So. 
that's that's a bit of a pet peeve. The I noticed that the uh, the other one that I have, I think the one two, not the one two four two eight. I forget what the other fourteen oh oh one. Fourteen oh oh one. Yes, that seems to stay a little bit cleaner inside, considerably faster as well. And that's an amazing car. If you haven't, if you don't own one of those with fourteen oh oh one, I highly recommend buying. You will not be dissatisfied. That is an amazing RC car. It really, really is. Ah, my bad. I would want to put this. All right, so what happened there was the camera battery died, and when I put in a new battery, um, I, for whatever reason, lost audio. So you're only going to hear, like, the most extreme parts of the audio on this, like, revving the motor up or whatever. But what I did was I moved the servo lead. There's a tab that holds that down on the top of the drive shaft cover, so that's a little more proper. And I just kind of start going through here and just basically talking about um, some of the finer points of the A959, which you can expect. I'm just kind of testing, uh, just making sure the drive line is working properly and stuff like that. Just sort of feeling for any anomalies that might have introduced or, or whatever been taken away. Um, one of the things you'll notice as I'm running this and testing this is there seems to be a little like CV joint slop up in the front end. And that is admittedly a factor sometimes. It doesn't really reveal itself when it's running. It's only when you're just doing stuff like this and you kind of hear a little bit of it and it looks a little shaky. The rear end is totally solid. Um, but what happened there was I, you can see that I've put blue C cups in this and I've kind of added some other parts front and back. The plastic ones, when the when when you put sealed bearings into the plastic C hubs that come with this, um, it kind of takes all of the tolerance uh, and really tightens things up. And it uh, works great. But then as soon as you go and buy the metal C cups and you put the C V joints in there, the bearings fit great inside of the C cups. But for whatever reason, then it reveals the C V joint slop. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how or why, but it just does. And so um, again, it's nothing that really affects it too much on how it runs. This comes with a 390 brushed motor in it. There is a brushless version that is available. I honestly don't know why you'd ever want a brushless. Uh, I think the torque twist alone would just cause the thing to just flip over the second you hit full throttle. Um, I'm going to do a full speed test on this right here. You can see almost a little bit of ballooning of the wheels, but these are a really low profile, low sidewall wheel, so you don't get a whole lot of expansion on them, which is nice. An incredible amount of traction on a variety of surfaces. So it hits full speed. Everything seems to be running A-OK -okay with that. Um, I'm just going to pretty much put the body back on this here in a second. Uh, oh, I think I go over a little bit about this being a five-wire servo system. So if you do want to upgrade the electronics in this, it is going to require a full overhaul. The wheels and tires were a 7 millimeter addition. Uh, what else? <laughs> Yeah, seven millimeter. Let me rephrase that. That's those are seven millimeter. If you if you want to upgrade wheels and tires on this, there's only a few options out there where you can stay factory. I put metal hexes on this, and kept it seven millimeter because the twelve millimeter just didn't really seem to be conducive of a vehicle this size. Um, the one two, or excuse me, the one four oh oh one twelve meter. Absolutely, this keep it seven. And these are the only metal seven millimeter that you can find. But if you get this, you have to glue your beads or else you will walk right out of the tires the first time you put it on the ground, which is something that I did. I managed to take one turn and I'm looking at tires flying across the parking lot. Um, and so anyway, be sure to glue your beads before you head out with these if you buy this set. Um, I don't know really what else I could mention about this. I kind of ramble on for a few minutes more. Uh, I think basically I've just experienced really good performance with this thing. I didn't expect this car to last more than a week. For 52, 53 bucks that I paid for it, I kind of thought for sure that the thing was just gonna break and I would just end up replacing metal part after metal part. I've had this thing for a couple of months now and I can't tell you how many battery cycles that I've put it through. And it's awesome. I cannot recommend the A959 enough for anybody out there who wants to get a nice street-ready bash rig. Again, it's not a bash rig. I call this more of a speed speed racer. Um, and you can customize the body. I ended up just throwing a little bit of uh, black paint on this and threw some stickers on it. I also switched the clips over to SEX24 clips that have the little rubber tab on there, which is kind of nice. Makes it a little more convenient when you're popping those up. You can see that right there. And what else have I done? That's about it. I've really just run this thing. I haven't had to work on it a ton. I haven't had to do a whole bunch with it. 
They even switched over the rear clips to black ones so you don't see the chrome ones. Um, I really like the black and blue paint scheme on this as well. Uh, I think it definitely suits me. And what else? I know I haven't done any videos, any really run videos of this. And the one that I did do, I mean, I think, I think over like a month's period of time, it had about 20 views. So you're probably not going to see this appear on the channel too much. But this video is for the WL Toys A959 owners out there. So on that note, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm probably running out of time here. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, ring that bell notification if you want to see more content like this. But thanks for stopping by. Peace out.